Hello, everyone, and welcome back to season number two, episode two of the Plymouth Argyle Road to Glory, and I've been busy off screen. As you can tell right now, I made a signing. Tanner Tesman has come into the club. We needed to upgrade our center midfield. We needed a legit number three option as a backup. He's currently listed as a CDM. However, I have him trained to become a center midfielder. He's 66 overall. I'm expecting him to actually increase as a center midfielder. As you can tell with the development, he's... He's pretty solid all around. I mean, right now he has the long passer for the AI and a playmaker for the AI, so I'm really looking forward to that. Working on his skill moves. Apparently, when you move him to a center midfielder, it works on his skill moves. Has a five-star weak foot, which is huge. I'm going to put him on that right-hand side, hopefully, if he does overtake Luca Canal. And here's why. Luca Canal has not been solid. He's had six games, zero goals, zero assists. He's only had one clean sheet. He needs to get better, and I think he might help or might help him if he's able to come off the bench. Whereas Bryce Duke has six games. He has three goals, which, yes, they came in the Champions Trophy. He has one assist. Even though his average for the championship is a 6.4, which I think is a little messed up, especially from the last game, he had a lot of good passes in the last game, and they did not calculate it right. They gave him a 6.3, I think, in the last game, which is horrible. However, Bryce Duke's going to keep his job. Currently, Luca Canal is on the hot seat to maybe potentially lose his job or become a bench player. However, in game number one, we have AFC Wilmington in the Carbero Cup. I'm actually going to go ahead and play the second team. Reeves, Tesman, and Clark are going to get the start in the midfield. Robbie Robinson and Frank's going to get up top. And then the back line, as you can tell, we all have our backup players. Now, And if you notice something, Dixon is starting in the second team, and here's why. I have decided that I am going to go 100% into Bernardo. We can go ahead and sign him. I think I might go ahead and hit him up right now to see if I can bring him into the club. Maybe not fully sign him in yet because I want him to start in game number one of the played game. But he is a guy that I might – I'm going to go ahead and go after. A couple other things I've done off screen – Adam Reach, the guy that was a free agent that I wanted to bring in, he's gone to Espanol, so I'm going to go ahead and take him off. Come back down here real quick. Jeff Adanella, he's a guy that I might bring in. Still have not decided yet what I'm going to do with him. He's a, He would be a solid goalkeeper, or sorry, backup goalkeeper. So if we did need a solid backup goalkeeper, he's the guy I'd like to bring in. We're waiting to see. A couple other guys I've found in free agency. So Deshaun Bernard, a center back from Manchester United, he has solid... He has solid skills. I'm waiting to get more on him. He might be a second transfer window type of sign because I don't think we're going to get a report back on him. I don't think we're going to get a report back on him in time, and I really don't want to sign a player that I don't know 100% about him, especially because I was able to find a couple center backs in the free agency. So Nelson Abbey, a center back who can also play the left back, he looks okay. Nothing spectacular, but compared to our center backs, he might be better than them. And if he is, I might sign him up. Aaron Allen, a uh, youth academy, I guess you can say, center back. You can also play right back. Not looking anything like Abby, but we'll have to wait and see. LaShurel Balk from the Netherlands. I know he's not an English guy, and he's not really a Scottish, Northern Ireland, Welsh, or American, but he's from the Netherlands. And I was looking through my rules that I gave myself beforehand, and I forgot that I gave myself a rule limit on foreign players. And it was five. So I'm going to activate that rule right now. So even if we get Fernando, even though I know I said in episode one I'm only going to sign one foreign player, I'm going to actually increase that to five just in case if I find anyone in the free agents to kind of make sure that we do not get relegated. Lucero Balk looks fantastic. I'm waiting to get a scout report on him before I even sign him up. I'm going to keep a close eye on him because if I do notice that someone's trying to bring him into the club, I might try to sign him. I mean, at 6'6", six, six, he has high defensive work rate, five-star weak foot, two-star skill. I mean, he could be someone that could come in and start beside Fernando. Ryan Bent. Bender, another American, a right back. As you can tell, I was trying to find a bunch of players that fit the, the scheme. And then Alex Adai, 27 years old, an Englishman striker, just trying to see what he would be compared to ours. So, however, I've talked long enough. I'm going to go ahead and sign for Nan or Bernando, and then I'm also going to go show you something the Youth Academy that I want to do real quick. So let's go ahead and approach to sign Bernando. So it says it's going to take him about six Point five to bring them in. I'm going to try to lowball them a little bit just because if you notice our our I guess our expert said we can either offer between 6.5 and 6.5. I think he might his contract might be coming up soon 
And because of that, I want to see if maybe we can get him for a smooth six mil. It would save us about 500,000, especially with his wage, because we already tried this once. We know his wage is going to be a little bit higher. I would love to be able to get him for a little bit cheaper, so then I have a, just a little bit more left to either worry about the free Youth Academy, worry about free agents, or even sign in another guy that could be solid. So let's go ahead and submit this. Six mil, will they accept that for Bernardo? And they will. I'm kind of blanking on what we offered him before. I'll, I haven't edited that video yet. I just edited the season finale video. That should be up actually while this video is being recorded right now. So that should be huge. However, we just signed Bernardo. I'm going to train him to be a center back, but I'm going to do that after the game. And one last thing before we actually go quick send this Carbero Cup game. There is a cam in here that I want to go ahead and promote. Sam McDonald. He's 17 years old. Between 77 and 94 potential, which is huge. He's 58 right now. He's going to be asked to be promoted soon, either now or in January. I want to go ahead and promote him now. He could be a solid backup to our cam situation. Will Cameron... I'm still waiting for him to become a cam, and I'm not going to promote him until he actually does become a cam. But because of that, Sam McDonald's going to go ahead and get promoted. Let's go ahead and promote him. Let's go check him out, and then we'll go ahead and get into this game. All right, guys, as we get ready for this AFC Wilmington game, for our first Carbero Cup action, I've actually decided not to really go into details with Sam McDonald. All I really did is I went in, changed his kit number, and added him to the loan list. He is getting to start a nod over Ben Reeves. I know it's about a f four overall difference but if i'm about to loan him out i'd rather let him come in show me what he's got and then go ahead and loan him out again robbie robinson and frank's getting to start up top tesman and clark are starting alongside mcdonald in that midfield osu Seymour, dixon aronson and edwards are in the back line and cooper is starting in goal there's wilmington starting 11 i'm just going to go ahead and quick sim this get this over with let's see if we get the win and it is a a 1-1 draw with a 4-3 on penalties. Very interesting. So Aronson gets it in. Edwards gets it in. Tolley gets it in. Robinson, Robbie Robinson did not get it in. And it looks like Wilmington lost or did not score their last two to get the equalizer. Let's see what happened. Luke Jebcock must have came in. Jebcock gets a goal in the 77th minute. He came in for Frank. I guess Frank was tired. Look at that. So he came in for Frank for the 47th minute. Palmer gets a goal right after that. Jebcock gets a goal in the 77th minute. Totally comes in for Clark. Very interesting that Ben Reeves did not come in. But I guess since Tolley can play center mid. All right, so it's a 4-3 victory on penalties. We're on to the next round, and let's go ahead and sign Bernardo into the club and get him ready for this first game. Come on in, my guy. Let's go ahead and get this started. I missed out on him before because I did not want to give him a $20,000 wage if i can get anywhere close to that this time i'm going to sign him up he wants a critical he's 75 he's going to be the best player on the team i am more than welcome to give that he wants a two year or sorry a one year loan or one year deal i'm going to decline that and give him a two year just because if we do one he's going to go out, out on free agent or a pre-contract next season no release clause i am perfectly fine with that and here comes the salary so i'm going to offer 15 like i did before However, because I was able to save 500000 on him, I'm going to actually take that 500000 and give it to him as a signing bonus. Let's see if he's willing to accept that. No. So he wants 20 k 10 clean sheets. That leaves with about no money, so he really can't sign anyone. And a signing bonus of 500 I probably shouldn't have done that bonus. So let's get rid of that bonus. Let's just submit that. Let's see what he wants. 22, you know what? I'll accept that. 22K into the club. Bernardo is into the club. We have a brand new center back. Let's go check him out. So here we go. Bernardo is going to be rocking number five. I'm okay with that. If I shouldn't be, please let me know in the comments down below. It's going to take two weeks to train him up to a center back. That's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and chuck him into the starting 11. So Tucker actually had an increase. He's up to 60 now. Dixon can go there. We're going to actually move Dixon off. Bernardo looks to be a little tired. I guess he must have played in a Carbero Cup game, which makes sense. But there's our back line now. It's looking very solid. Cooper actually went up too. And then Seymour. Is Seymour better than 
Dixon. He is, but it looks like Parker's actually better. So I'm going to let Parker come up. Yeah. Yeah, Parker is better than Dixon. So I'm going to let Parker come in off the bench. That's our starting 11. That's our sub 11. I will let you know if anything happens in between this game or in between now and that uh, our next game. go sorry about not talking in the opening scene guys i forgot that the game was starting i was on my phone trying to tweet some stuff and luke jeb luke jebcott trying to get us a quick goal not able to get anything back it's still zero zero real quick about bernardo bernardo is actually exhausted none of the players were able to recover from the carbero cup game He's a little tired, so is the bench. And Cooper with the easy save. I'll let you guys know if anything exciting happens. And that wasn't supposed to happen. That is that is controller error right there. That's not on Cooper. That's not on the team. That is all my fault. I don't really know what I was doing there. I guess I didn't hold X down long enough, but it's... Yeah, it's that. That's what that is. So, uh, alrighty then. That's how we're starting off today's first game. Moving it down very nicely. Bernardo already telling the defense where to go. He lets one guy get past him. Look at this pass. Saw that little little point that he had to let the defense know where to go. And Cooper with the easy save. And look at this. Oh, my God. Dom Telfoid able just to run and get the ball. Can Telfoid get something? Telfoid still running. Telfoid takes the shot off the goalkeeper. I'm not really quite sure what happened there. If it was a defensive breakdown or what, but I was able to cross the ball, or sorry, clear the ball out. It led to that. Let's see if maybe we can get something going here. Luke Jebcott. Jebcott, can he find someone? Looks for Telfoid. Telfoid running right down the middle, and Telfoid... Again, hits it right at the goalkeeper. Honestly, should have waited because I think Jebcott was running. And it's... We're there. We're just not able to find the back of the net. Oh, no. Bolton overruns his his play. They're trying to move it around. They do move it around. And Cooper not able to keep it out of the back of the net. And it's 2-0 Blackburn over us. Look at this. Blackburn trying to make it 3 Trying to make it three. Takes the shot. Not able to get past Cooper. I was going to go ahead and sub in Tanner Tesman. But Tanner Tesman is exhausted. And I think I might need him for that Sunderland game coming up. And look at this. It opens up perfectly for them. And it's 3-0 Blackburn. And are you joking right now? What a goal. We're able to stop it, but it just falls perfectly to number 18. He's running full speed, and we're not able to do anything about this. Davenport makes it 4-0 for Blackburn, and this game looks ugly, but it wasn't. Like, look, we get to stop. He's running full speed, not able to do anything. Tucker tries to do his best, and it's 4-0. And that is it for game number one of the played games today. A 4-0 thumping. I'm just, I'm honestly just disappointed because the game looks like it was a blowout when honestly it wasn't. Real quick, guys, as we get ready for the Sunderland game, I want to go check on the younger players. And a couple things. Nelson Abbey has a value of about 550000 so... To me, that says that he's not going to be anything special. The same with, with Aaron Allen, a 160000 value. I'm just going to go ahead and remove him. He's not going to see the playing field at all. Um, Balk, though, the guy from the Netherlands, has a 2.3 value, or 2.3 million, I should say, value. So I might go ahead and try to sign him. Ryan Bender has a 350000 I'm just going to go ahead and un... And then the last one, real quick, is... 300 is Josh Sargent. So Josh Sargent's a guy who Real Madrid's willing to loan out at 74. I'm going to go ahead and before this match, I'm going to try to sign Josh Sargent or loan Josh Sargent. And then bulk, I'm going to go ahead and try to, 
to sign him too. So let's go ahead and do these two before we sim this Sunderland game. I know I didn't say anything about it, but I'm going to go ahead and sim the Sunderland game just because you guys watched me play Sunderland last season. I, I don't want to keep playing the same teams. I want to make the channel fresh. And because of that, I'm I'm going to sim the first Sunderland game. Maybe down the road we play it. But for right now, I'm going to sim it. Hopefully we can get a victory. Balk wants to be important. Five year, we're going to deny release clause 400 or 44,000 for a wage. I'm perfectly fine with that. So we just signed him. I'll go check him out in a minute. And then Josh Sargent. Let's see if Real Madrid's willing to loan list him. Welcome to Plymouth. I know this isn't as spectacular as you, but we're just going to do a basic term for Josh Sargent. A one-year loan. Looks like looks like Sedan is perfectly fine with that. And when it comes to wages, let's... I don't know. Oh, I can only afford 2080, so that's awesome. Would you be willing to do 2080? They want 6040. Let's counter. 2080. They want 5050. I, for some reason, do not have that. 2080. And no. So we might have to sell a player to bring in Josh Sargent. However, let's go look at our new guys. So where are you at? Balk, 67 rated. Okay. So he would definitely go into the starting lineup. What should we do for development? Continue his defending. Yeah, let's just do sweeper. It'll continue his defending. Work on agilities. Work on reactions. Stamina and jumping will be included. Heading accuracy. What's his heading accuracy at? Where is it? 69. So his heading accuracy. He could be a guy that we are able to cross it into. So unfortunately, Tucker, you will come off the bench, or you'll come off the starting lineup. Balk will then move up to the starting. That's actually a pretty solid back line, if I have to say. Tucker can stay on the team. I think the rest of the center backs, I might go ahead and loan out. So let me, let me go ahead and do that, and I'll see you guys for the quick sim against Sunderland. All right, guys, as you can tell... Us versus Sunderland, they they play the same formation as we play. We're a little bit more tired than they are, but I'm hoping with the addition of Balk, I'm hoping with the addition of Bernardo, we can get the victor, the victory, I should say. So let's see a quick sim. It is a 1-1 draw. So we finally get a point on the season. I'm okay with that. Who got our one goal? Luke Jebcott, perfect. So Luke Jebcott got our one goal. It's a point... We are no longer pointless in the season. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the standings. So we are currently 24 still. Our goal difference is horrible. Negative 10 right now. That needs to change. But if we're able to get a victory against Coventry, we're able to move up to at least 7th or 18th, I should say. Not 17th. At least 18th. Because that put us on four goals unless we win 7-0 and Sunderland loses again which would be pretty cool. Let's go ahead and hop into that Coventry game. After a beatdown, I guess you can say, against Blackburn, we take on Coventry City in Coventry City, I'm just going to say. It's, uh, it's a huge game. If we're able to get to three points, we're able to move up in the table and get out of the relegation zone for the first time all season. We had a draw against Sunderland, which was huge. The team, again, is tired, and this month just keeps going on and on because of the number of games we have coming up i'm going to do this game and then the last game of the episode will be the fixture in the carbero cup i'll leave the last game of the month into the next episode episode three however us versus coventry huge three points is on the line let's get it coventry still moving the ball around trying to get around our defense our defense is back to its old self bernardo is not playing this game because he is exhausted and our new guy, Bulk, is not playing because he's exhausted as well. Got Dixon in there. Cooper with the easy save. And not really quite sure what just happened there. But they still have a chance here. And that is it. It's 1-0 Coventry over Plymouth. This is not starting out good. And here comes Duke. Can Duke find something? Duke, look for Luke Jebcott. Jebcott finds McDonald. McDonald starting instead of Tolly. McDonald takes a shot. Hits the goalkeeper. Duke, Duke, can he find someone? Gives up to McDonald. McDonald 
sees Tel Jebkai. Jebkai sees Cooper along this left-hand side. Cooper running. Cooper, can he find someone? Looks for Jebkai. Jebkai! And Jebkai misses it. That could have been the equalizer we needed right there. Cooper finally making a push forward. Not really quite sure my, why my wingbacks have not been moving forward like they did in season number one. I might need to tell them to do so. However, it's still 1-0, and that was probably our best chance all all game. To McDonald now finds Talfoy. Talfoy, can he get a horrible, horrible pass on his part? I know it was right after he took it down, but I'm expecting more out of him. We are a championship team right now. Maybe not quality, it seems like, but we are a championship team, and Talfoy needs to play better. Not really quite sure what that was. A horrible pass on their part. Let's see if we can get something going here. Tucker gives it to, and oh no, oh no, please Cooper save it, and he cannot. It's 2-0. Walker with probably the most easiest goal you'll ever see on this channel, and we're down again. Bryce Duke running down this left-hand side. Bryce Duke, can he find someone? Looks for Jebcott. Jebcott with a very risky pass. Gives it back to Bryce Duke. Bryce Duke, can he do something? Gives it to Tanner Tesman, his first time. Look at this. Robbie Robinson, can he take the shot? Yes, he can. And Robbie Robinson with an easy goal early on. Tanner Tesman's able to find Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson comes in off the bench. It's 2-1. We need more of this in the second half. And a couple players might be earning their spots after this game. Brilliant pass by Tanner. A brilliant shot by Robbie. We're able to get something going. I'm not sure if the game's calculating that Bryce Duke is such an, a, an amazing player at, along with Luke Jebcott, and because of that, they're they're focusing more on them. They're leaving that right-hand side open. However, Tanner comes in within a matter of, of seconds, gets an assist. Robbie Robinson comes in with a matter of a couple minutes because I, I subbed him off around 42 minutes. And it's 2-1. Let's, let's get something going here, boys. Look at this. Can we get something going here? McDonald, McDonald waiting for someone to make a run. Gives it up to Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson, McDonald calling for the run again. Look at this. Robbie Robinson with the amazing pass, and McDonald can't find the back of the net. A difficult, difficult shot for him. It's still 2-1. And that's it for game number two of the played games. 2-1. Coventry is able to beat us again. It feels like we, we take a step forward, but then we take three steps back. Not able to get any points off of this game. Very, very disappointing start to the season. And I don't really know what needs to be done. If certain players need to be starting, other players need to be on the bench. But let's... Oh, we got to figure something out, that's for sure. Well, guys, as we get ready for this Carbero Cup uh, second round against Ackerton, we we have a Youth Academy report from England, our three-star, three-star. Teddy Holt might be someone nice. 325, very nice potential. Go ahead and sign him up. Reese Howe, not even a chance. Luca Bradshaw, 500,000. We'll definitely sign him up. Luke Stevenson, 250. We'll wait, and then Felix Haynes, 190. I'm going to give both these guys an extra month to, to increase to see if maybe they get a better potential. Let's go ahead and take a look, quick look at our two guys. And actually, while I'm over here, I still have not hired a two-star, two-star scout. A three-star, two-star is here. Would I know I said I wanted to do a two-star, two-star before, but... I just I don't want to keep waiting any longer. You know what? We'll go ahead and sign Ruben Moss up. Ruben Moss can come in. I'm going to go ahead and send him to, to let's see, where should I send him to? It's a three-month thing. Um, you know what? Let's actually, I would like to start increasing the, the nine-month guys. So we do have a couple players from America. I don't really want to send a nine-month guy to any of, you know, like Wales or Scotland or Northern Ireland or Republic of Ireland. Let's... Let's actually send him down to Brazil. We have a brand new Brazilian. Let's see if if we can bring him up. And he, here's the deal, okay? If if we get relegated this season, I'm going to have to sell Bernardo or loan him out. I'm going to do the same thing with any Brazilian. So if we find any good Brazilians, I'm either going to have to loan them out for a year or sell them right away. So that's going to be the plan here, even though it's not really – it's a three-month thing. Again, I'm going to send him to Brazil. Maybe we can find someone good. 
again, if we get relegated, I'm either going to have to loan out all the Brazilians or sell them. So that is the plan I'm going to do with that. However, let's go ahead and take a quick look at these new guys. So real quick, you're not it. Where are the balance guys? Because those are the guys that haven't been touched. So cool. So Terry Holt is a center forward slash striker. Nice physics. Okay pace or solid pace. I should say 70 solid pace. Can he become just a flat out striker? It takes him two weeks to become a flat out striker. It'll take him 10 weeks to become a cam. Let's go ahead and t turn Teddy Holt into a striker. Again, another striker who has very good potential. Bring him up now. Probably loan him out in the second transfer window so that way his potential would increase. I mean, that's a plus 24 right there just for a minimum. I'm okay with that. And then Luca Bradshaw, a right mid, left mid. Solid potential. 56 overall. Could he become a cam or a center midfielder? So it takes 10 weeks for him to become a center midfielder. It takes two weeks to become a cam. 65 weeks to become a striker. Let's go ahead and make him into a cam because we don't really have any right midfielders or left midfielders. Will Cameron, how many more weeks does he have? Four more weeks and we'll have a solid backup cam, which I'm okay with that. David Ryan's becoming a center mid. I even forgot about this guy. All right, so the youth academy looks good. We're starting to fill it up good. And let's go ahead and hop into this last game of the episode. As we get ready for game number three, I am desperately in need of a win. Even though this is not a league game, I need some sort of high to close out this episode. It's it has not been good. We've I've made a couple changes just to see if maybe they're the reason why. Robbie Robinson starting alongside Luke Jebcott. Tanner Tesman is also getting the starting nod. Both those players did fantastic jobs in their uh, coming off the bench in the last game. Tolly's back in the starting lineup. We have a a solid back line. Hopefully, I can win this game with ease in the first half and lo and not loan. Sorry, substitute the correct players off so that way they're ready for the next game. I'm talking about our center backs and our cam. Akerton's a team that we played last season. I want to say we crushed them. I feel like in one game and the second game they were able to get the better of us. However, Car Carbero Cup action round two. Let's get into it and let's get the W. Nil trying to go up early. Let's see if we can maybe get some form of attack going here. Look at this. Bryce Duke running down this left-hand side. I'm pretty sure Jeb Cott's on. Yes, he is. And Tolly takes a shot. And Tolly finds the bo bottom right corner of the net. And it's 1-0 Plymouth over Ackerton. I'm sorry, Bryce Duke, that you did not get your assist. However, I was a little bit worried that Jeb Cott was not going to be able to make the goal. Tolly comes in. He gets his first goal of the Carbero Cup, I'm pretty sure. It's 1-0, and let's hope we can build off this. Well, Ackerton again is coming down here. I think we need a quick second goal. And Fernando, Fernando was able to get the ball, but I'm not really quite sure what happened there. Let me see this replay real quick. Fernando comes in. He steals the ball, tries to... Another FIFA cheese goal. It's 1-1 Ackerton, Plymouth, Argyle. This is not what I wanted to see early on in this game. Let's see if we can get something going here. Here comes Scully. Scully trying to get something going here. Ackerton moving it down very nicely. Bernardo, he's in the middle there. What a nice little save or still by Tanner Tesman. And another FIFA cheese drop. You have to be kidding me right now. We're playing perfect defense. We're getting the ball out, and it's just falling perfectly to Ackerton right now. It's a 2-1 lose right now. Just look at this. I mean, I don't know what else you want us to do. Tanner Tesman gets the ball. He gets pushed off. It's... That's what happens right there. It's 2-1. Maybe we can get something going here. Not looking so good for us at all in any competition. Oh, no, and another one. Are you joking right now? It's just the ball falls perfectly to their players. I, I do not understand it. We, we get a block, and just look at this. I mean, I know it might sound like I'm complaining, but how more perfect does that get to? Goes off a defender, and it falls perfectly to a wide-open man. And it's 3-1 right now, and we are just getting absolutely – I I just do not understand it right now. Really good attacking 
Are you joking right now? We are a full minute over stoppage time again. It's 4 1. And are you kidding right now? 5 1. They're making us look like a League 2 side right now. It's. It's horrible. Or a League 1 side should say, sorry, I'm getting my leagues wrong now. This is just. We put up a be we put up a better fight against better teams and it's it's getting ugly early five one maybe we can get a goal Luke Jebcott takes a shot and Luke Jebcott is able to get one back it's five two very interesting here maybe a little late drama not quite sure but let's go can Duke find someone Duke. Looking for Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson finds Luke Jebcott. Jebcott has the ball. Jebcott not able to find the shot, but hold up. Robbie Robinson able to keep the ball going. And Robbie Robinson finds the bottom corner of the net, and it's 5-3. And oh, no. Oh, no. Ugh. And that's going to end it right there. A 6-3 beatdown from Ackerton. They gave us a little bit of hope. That just shut the door on it. Look at this. Evans moving forwards. Evans, can he find someone? Looks for Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson takes the shot. Not able to get there. And is that a totally goal? I'm not really quite sure what just happened there. Let's look at the replay. Even though there's five minutes left to go in the game. Gives it to Robbie. Robbie here pass, takes a shot off the defender. It is a totally goal, and we get a little FIFA cheese ourselves, finally. And this should be the final kick. A 6-4 loss in round two of the Carbero Cup against Akerton. I guess the good news is that we don't have any more games to make our players tired. Look at this. He had eight attempts today. Had a hat trick against us. You just can't do that. I mean, 6-4, yeah, we, 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 we had a little bit of push at the end. I, you know, oh, I'll, I'll see you guys in the menus. And that is it, guys, for today's episode. I'll leave you here on the eaves of this Middleborough game. They are fourth in the league. Oh, they're fourth in the league table. We're 24th. We have a negative 11 goal difference right now. One point. If we're able to get, we just need to start. We just need to slowly start scoring. Middlesbrough is fourth. They've scored third, or 13 goals, 6 goals have gone past them. So this should be a very interesting, interesting game. However, guys, that is it for Episode 2, Season 2. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode. I'm out.